All right there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pommy and Oz YouTube channel. And we're joined by an icon of the social media game. We've got AFL information, trade, rumours and results and host of the Kick It to Scoops YouTube show. Um, the legend that is, Cooper Gretsch. How are you doing, Cooper? Thanks, Pommy. Thanks for having me on, mate. Great introduction. I've been on a few podcasts and that's the best one so far, so I appreciate it, Pommy. Hey, mate, we, we we pride ourselves on our introductions around these parts. We pride ourselves. Absolutely, we do. <laughs> now, obviously, <laughs> we've got the big game for you guys. We've got the Ross Derby, uh, we're colloquially calling it, a Marvel Stadium 440 finishing off round one, St. Kilda versus Fremantle. What are your initial thoughts, first of all, of Ross the Boss returning to his spiritual yeah. home, St. Kilda. Are you excited about that? I am, Pommy. I absolutely am. I love the move Ross, Ross Lyon coming in. He's the boss for a reason in the 150th year too, just by coincidence. I was, had a, throughout the year last year, I had Brett Rand should have been gone. And then when they re-signed him prematurely too, mind you. And then I thought, no, they should still get rid of him, even though they re-signed him. I didn't think it happened at that stage because they did re-sign him. But before that, I felt they didn't need to rush. What was the rush? No one was going to poach him for a senior coaching role. And, uh, yeah, but Ross in, I love the move. And once Ratton was officially out, I was pumping for Ross. And, uh, thankfully, Ross, he turned down Essendon. And, obviously, then he came to the Saints. So I love the move. Ross, the boss, is back. He's making good moves already. He did. And he, he also brought a cow and icon and uh, a mm. friend of the Blues, Soss in. And you had a wonderful trade and draft period, particularly the draft period, yeah, yeah, you took a big friend of my channel, but a big friend of your channel, Matthias Philippou. Yeah. You must be excited about him. He's my selection for Rising Star. Absolutely. He was for mine as well. Joint winner, for Will Ashcroft. But yeah, Philippo, I love the draft selection with uh, Isaac Keeler from w, uh, from SA, Philippo's teammate. Um, Ollie Hotton, who I think you had on as well. He's good, but unfortunately he's got an injury at the moment and uh, a couple of other young players as well. So I thought the draft was terrific. Trade period, not so much. Saying Cordy was the only acquisition through free agency, but uh, it tried Geordie to go. He didn't work. The only thing that annoyed me, which I vented and ranted on, I suppose, on my show, was uh, not targeting Griffin Logue and Lloyd Meek hard enough, where basically, and Jack Bowes as well for them, and considering pick seven was on the table with Jack Bowes, and Jack Bowes is pretty solid as well. And then look who you're given pick seven. You're given essentially Jai Clark and Jack Bowes for free, almost. The Geelong, so but yeah, Philippo, I love the move of him in particular. Obviously, I always say now all aboard the Philippo train, and um, yeah, Pommy, obviously, you wanted him, and obviously, you got Ali Hollands, a solid player as well. But uh, yes, Philippo, great guy, love it. He's a great guy, and I'm looking forward to seeing the kid this Sunday on the mm. watch along watching them. But looking into this game, what are your thoughts on the matchup? Can you beat Fremantle? Fremantle are really pumped up by the press, but I think you're a dangerous proposition at Marvel. Yeah, I agree. At Marvel, it, uh, we're always a chance at Marvel against anybody, for that matter. Uh, Freo, yeah, obviously, they were too excited. I had them predicted for fourth in my final ladder predictions on Monday night, but, uh, yeah, no, it would always be a tough task, tough, tough task against the Dockers. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm tipping St Kilda, and assume they'll win, and hope they'll win, but, uh, yeah, the Dockers will be very tough. Um, but, yeah, I think It'll be a really line ball game. It could be anything under three goals. It's going to be an entertaining game, isn't it? Because obviously Ross mm. knows Fremantle pretty well. A lot of these players yeah. are still on the list from when mm. he was the coach. Is there anyone particular that you look at on your list? Because we know you've had a horrific injury run mm. in the off season. Is there anyone you're looking at who thinks, I think he can stand up in this game? Yeah, well, we've got 14 injuries at the moment. You mentioned the injuries there, 14, and about probably at least six of them would be in the best 22, So just off the top of my head. So that's pretty annoying. But someone I feel that they that can help our side is someone's going to – Michael Walters may not play round one as well, which will help. He seems to always dominate against us. He's been pretty quiet the last few years, but he's always been one that's dominated against us. Uh, but uh, Andy Brayshaw, Will Brody, is that midfield grade with Sarong as well. Jack Steele and Brad Crouch left a bolt – Shoulder the bulk of that load, obviously, with Win Hager being 50 50 as well. Um, but yeah, uh, player in particular, probably, well, I would have said Tim Embry as well, but he's not playing either. So you're a bit sure on the four line department, the tall department. So, uh, uh, Jay Gresham, if I had to pick one, I'd say Gresham is the one that they'd have to keep an eye on and someone that could turn the game for us because 
as we've seen in the past before his two years of injuries, Gresh was very, very good. And even in the short amount of games he played the last two years, he's still been very good, important, gets around 30 possessions, game kicks a couple of goals. So he'd be one they'd have to keep an eye out on. He's definitely one we've talked about on this channel as one to watch this year because I think he's, yeah. Jade, he's one of them players that I think he's grossly underrated. I, I, mm -hmm. I think if he played for one of the big Melbourne clubs, you count and mm -hmm. Collingwood to dominate the press mm -hmm. because of their fan base, yeah. I think people would be billing this guy up a lot higher than what he usually mm -hmm. is. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. Obviously, think of a shy Bolton, Dugowie type of player. I know Dugowie's bigger in size, but um, yeah, they're, they're the same hype that both those two players get, uh, Gresh would be the same if he was at Richmond or Collingwood or Geelong or some of the sides you mentioned as well, the top, the big clubs. <laughs> the big clubs. I mean, obviously, the goal kicking. I've seen you do a lot of goal kicking <laughs> challenges, uh, Coops, and I'd imagine... Yeah. Um, I've got to give a shout out to some of your fans as well. Dylan Greenock, Matt DeLuca and Josh Hutchinson, who demanded I got you on to do the St. Kilda preview. So shout out yeah. to you, boys. But you must be close for a call up, Coops, with your <laughs> kicking. <laughs> well, it's fair to say, I'll be honest, I um, I won't put the behinds in there. But I did do a Golden Comp with St. Steve, as you know very well. And uh, Carbman22 is a young YouTuber on the rise and uh yeah, I always say, and I still speak to Cardi, especially nowadays, and I still give him crap about it. And uh, he tries to say he wasn't trying, he was unprepared. But yeah, we we're all unprepared because that was never meant to happen that day. We just, one of them had a footy. Then we just said, oh, why not go on here? So he can't blame me when he was in the same boat as me. So yeah, he's got excuses. But he did beat Paddy Cripps in a goal king comp. So I always label it now. You. May have beat Paddy Cripps, but I've beat the man that beat Paddy Cripps. But uh, yeah, my goal king is going okay. Um, I used to play as a forward when I did play juniors. I've stopped playing under, under 18s, uh, so six years ago now. But um, yeah, I don't mind kicking a few goals from the boundary as well. Uh, yeah, we've seen them, mate. You've done that re recreation of the Eddie Betts as well. Uh, yeah. Not a very beloved member of the Carlton fraternity, Mr. Yeah. Betts. He definitely is. I met Eddie, as you would have seen that photo the other, what was it, two weeks, a week or two ago. Yeah, it was great. Eddie gave up his timing. He got harassed by kids on the boundary line during the second and third quarter, and he's got the, obviously got the earpiece in, and he's taking photos with them, and I thought, no, I'll wait for the breaks, or wait till, you know, he's got his own break, because it's not really at the three-quarter time break for them. And, uh, yeah, Eddie was great um, to talk to for a little bit, but better than nothing, and, yeah, no, he's an absolute inspiration, is Eddie Betts. And uh, the Marmalade boys, you mentioned about St Kilda couldn't need my goal kicking. Well, Marmalade put a post up yesterday saying that that should happen. And uh, some people in those positions have seen it, but, you know, it's only a joke. But uh, it's funny to see someone like that posted when I didn't even mention anything to them. <laughs> well, I mean, you never know. And, I mean, obviously one guy who is going to be stopping um, your forwards, whoever does play, is the guy in the picture there, Alex Pierce. Is there anyone that you're yeah. looking at on Fremantle who are saying, we might have to do a tagging job on or look to stop. Mm. Who's the danger man for them, do you think? Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with Freo's side all around, not just Brayshaw, Sarong, Will Brody, who's been crazy since he moved from the Suns. Sean Darcy's an all-Australian caliber ruckman. you got Alex Pierce, the new skipper. He's fantastic. you got Fife. you got uh, Brennan Cox as well. Hayden Young, Heath Chapman. <laughs> I can't just pick one, I suppose. But if I had to pick one, I would say... So they might have to do a defensive forward role on Luke Ryan if he plays, but it's unlikely. So if it's not him, I would say probably the young fellas of the half back line, Hayden Young and Heath Chapman also. They're some of their key weapons. Hayden Young's got a ripping left foot kick, as you would know. Heath Chapman likewise. So uh, if it's not Luke Ryan, it's probably the two younger half backs. They're probably the key to them in their backup with our inexperienced um, forward line going into this game. And you talked about your know, experience forward line. Is there any selection, like who is going to be? Mm -hmm. Who do you think your key forwards are going to be in this game? There's been a lot of conjecture on it. Who do you think is going to be leading the line for you guys? It might be an unknown to uh, outsiders if you don't follow the clubs well. But Anthony Cominti, obviously, was going to be training at Carlton's VFL this year. He, he'll he probably headline and make his debut with Philippo as well. Uh, then you'll have Zane Cordy will probably be in there as well. They don't want to play Tom Campbell as the second ruck. They probably lean towards Zane Cordy considering he's played a little bit of forward at the um, Bulldogs his time there, and he has been in the preseason games as well. So, and Tommy Campbell's come back from the Achilles injury, only played last week in the two. So, I would assume they'd play Zane Cordy, Anthony Cominti, Philippo will be the third tall. Mitch Owens has been playing there as well. 
Uh, they'd be the four, and then you probably have Higgins and Butler there as well, and Gresh will flow down there, I'm sure, as well. And is there anyone that you're expecting to tear this game up from them young blokes? Who are you looking... Who, who you got your eye on of these new guys, especially Philippo? What's he going to do, do you think? I think mm. he's got a chance against Fremantle. Yeah, Philippo, he was going to be my choice. All aboard the Philippo train. But, uh, yeah, he's he's got... I've called it him the X factor of this year's draft. You've got Ashcroft, and she's on that a great as well. It's funny how people say, I'm only calling him the X factor of this year's draft because he was picked up at St Kilda. And clearly people would say they don't know what they're talking about because I've been saying it three months Months before I interviewed him the first time and before the draft. So it's not like I just said it because he's a saying up, but uh, yeah, he is the X Factor of this draft. I'm not the only one to say that in the higher up um, media as well from the AFL side of things. So yeah, he'd be the one for sure. And if, if outside of Philippo, he's been there for a little bit, but I mentioned him already. Gresh should have to be the other one. And uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of the young players that are injured from the last few years' drafts. So Caulfield's injured again. And then uh, Hunter Clark maybe is another one, but he's been there for a little bit as well. So there's not many other youngsters because they're all injured as well. It's been it's been a horrific injury time for St Kilda, and as a Carlton yes. fan, that we love an injury. I do actually feel sorry for St Kilda because it it's a mm-hmm. horrific injury list. It is fourteen of them, and uh, yeah, probably seven or eight of them being the best twenty-two. So disappointing. Max King obviously headlined by the major one, Jack Billings, Jack Hayes. Uh, there's more. I'm probably forgetting off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. At least we got it's the back like- on, I suppose. It's like all injuries, though, right? That it's mm-hmm. the same line as well. That's what happens yeah. to count. Like it's all your key forwards, pretty much, yeah. were like wiped out overnight, and that happens to yeah. count all the time. It's always one position. It's not spread. That's right. That's right. And with the rucking for you guys, has been a bit painful with Pitnet when he was injured, and Tom DeConing not play some games as well. So that that'd probably be in line. Be I'd probably so that's the only line you guys need to improve on, probably too overall, on the list wise, too. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind either of the Ruckman who are going to be in this game. I wouldn't mind a, a Rowan Marshall or Darcy. Yeah. I, I, I'd yeah. love them to come over. Yeah, definitely. Rose, a terrific Ruckman and one of the best in the common, the top three or five, sure. It'd be great. Now, what's your prediction for this one heading into this game? Where, where What do you think is going to be the score? Oh, I don't think it'll be a high, high scoring game. I don't think it's going to be low. People, people say Ross Line is going to bring all the defensive type of things in the games. There might be elements where there might be, but he's not going to play 2009 style for the whole game, every game for the whole season or his whole coaching tenure. That's not going to happen. He's said that about three times already. Um, but in terms of this game, with an inexperienced line, I don't expect a big score and it's against a great side in the Dockers. It is at Marfil. I'll go, oh, St Kilda 73. Fremantle 68. So five points. Oh, that's a tight game. I like it. Yeah. And I hope for your sake and my lovely wife, both big Saint fans, I, I hope you do yeah. get the win. It'll be a great time. I'm looking forward to doing the watch along and watching this mm. one and uh, hopefully cheering you guys home. Appreciate it, Pommy. It's, uh, hopefully we'll see that we get the win. Well, thank you very much for your time, Cooper. All of Cooper's links are in the description. He is on a road to 2,000 and more. So go and support him. He releases a weekly show, lots of content as well on his Facebook page, keeping you up to date. So go and support Cooper. Thank you very much for joining us, mate. Best of luck for St. Kilda and your YouTube career moving forward and hope to see you soon. All right, Pommy. Likewise, appreciate it, mate. Go subscribe to your channels, everyone, is his channels as well. So you do a great job, Pommy. We've been wanting to get on for a while, so appreciate it, mate. All the best. Mate, cheers. I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you, mate. Nice. No